Good morning, fans, Privateer FX. Coming at you Friday, end of the third week of June. June 23rd. That's just me drinking some coffee. Um, 5.30 in the morning in uh, London. Let's see what we got here today. We got uh, retail sales out of the UK, and then we also have PMIs out of Europe and UK. We also have Lagarde speaking before the European PMI, so that's like, um, that's a weird one. Um, but looks like we're going to get, um, the risk is we get some pretty negative numbers, especially out of the UK after raising rates yesterday. It's going to look pretty silly. Here's a sterling yen uh, chart. We talked yesterday about we were intuitionally bearish sterling yen. We all saw it, right? 53, the high, and it dropped 120 points, fucked around a bit, and then the Fed speakers and Powell were more hawkish. Um, and certainly we expected, and we popped back up. 256 um, we were 182.55 stop so that was fairly painful um, but it is what it is we were in a pretty good average our average was right around 152 oh, 182.60 um, <laughs> that's just life in FX right sometimes you sell the high sometimes you're stopped out at the high um, but we still like this thing lower, and it could be event-driven this morning. Big miss on retail sales after your central bank raises uh, 50 basis points uh, will strike the fear into sterling owners. Uh, so sterling yen could be your horse. We still have one hour and... 20 minutes for that release and then later in the morning i believe around 10 30 swiss time we have the pmis but we also have the european pmis uh, so let's look at euro yen this also it didn't quite um wasn't quite as juicy as the sterling yen we traded all the way up to 156.93 um this is obviously a bit stretched 600 points uh, just in the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, but last two weeks. Pretty steep uh, increase, so this has some room to snap back. If the European PMIs miss, uh, you can smack this pony, I don't know, maybe through 34. Um, maybe it's one of those days where you just... Uh, if you have the liquidity, if you don't have the liquidity, don't try this. But if you have the liquidity, you can sell it um, on the number. Uh, most of you do not have the liquidity, but if you have a professional aggregator, um, you can give that a try. And you also need quite speedy internet. Um, you know, so if you're trading at 28 milliseconds, that's way too fucking slow. Um, you kind of need under under 10 milliseconds for that kind of trade which again most of you do not have but anyway uh let's let's keep an eye on um euro yen downside with with a negative miss with the idea that chrissy is going to be hawkish right before the pmi so there might be a little blip up so it could be some zim zam um in euro yen but watching euro yen and sterling yen downside Let's look at Swiss yen, all-time high yesterday. Basically traded 160, um, 159.991. Uh, if you know anything about the Swiss franc, or if you've been watching it uh, for 30 years, this is a staggering price for Swiss yen. Uh, makes absolutely no sense to me, but here it is. Um, Maybe we get a pivot, you know. On these kind of deals, you're basically, you need you need a downside bar. 
And we actually got one on Tuesday, but then right back up, bang, bang, two big greenies. Um, not sure how to exercise that Swiss yen. Of course, the uh, SNB raised yesterday. Inflation is totally under control here. It's around 2%. Anyone who lives in Switzerland that you know, oh yeah, like me, I can tell you um, there's no real inflation here. Gas prices haven't changed. Food prices haven't changed. Uh, public transport prices haven't changed. Um, there's probably some housing inflation, but there always is in Switzerland just because everyone in the world wants to live here. So the demand always outstrips supply. That's just, that's just fact. Um, so anyway, I don't, I don't foresee some wild tightening exhibition from the SNB. I think they're, they're basically done. So this could also be, you know, reasons to get long Euro Swiss. Although that's a bearish bar. We were 44 offered yesterday in Euro Swiss, 41.9 high. Um, that was in our long term book. One of those days, right? We got stopped out at the highs and sterling again. We didn't quite get paid in, in Euro Swiss. Um, well now we're going to have to change that. So now we don't really want to get paid at 44. We either have to hit a bid or move this up to 80. I think we're going to move it up to 80. This is a long-term trade um, for Euro Swiss, but uh, just kind of funny. Uh, stopped out the absolute high, and then we just missed a take profit on the daily high. It's no no drama, but um, anyway, Swiss are done uh, raising. What does that mean? Where do we go with that? What's the trade? Is it short Swiss yen? Is it long Euro Swiss, or is it long dollar Swiss? I can tell you the um, retail people. Fucking long dollar Swiss again up the wazoo. That usually is tr can be troubling. So I'm guessing Euro Swiss is the number one vehicle. Swiss yen is probably number two, and then dollar Swiss is number three. I think dollar Swiss is just gonna be 88, 90 um, for a while here. Uh, anyway, looking forward, what's the single best chart setup today? It's Euro Sterling. Um, 86.34, that was the sort of bingo high after during the nonsense uh, after BOE. So we, we, we traded down. So obviously sterling strength on the release down to 70, up to 30, I guess this is 36, sorry, 36 matches. Exactly Monday's high. Up through 36, we feel like this um, this can continue up a little further. So maybe this is a retail sales trade, or or maybe it's um, PMIs out of the UK. How is this going to re be reflected in in cable? Here we are, right? This is the pivot we were talking about. Uh, we were talking about this with regards to sterling yen yesterday. Sterling yen, we were we were saying, oh, one one seventy nine ninety two will coincide with one twenty six ninety. Uh, not thinking that dollar yen was going to jump the fence and uh, go up hundred points, hundred and twenty points. Um, but this is now in play, right? This was your. Um, this was your moment where we sort of cleared the fresh air and we were able to make these 128.50 highs. It's a nice little pivot. Somewhere between 80 and 90. You're going to probably need some luck to pick out the exact number. My guess is 78 is the safe entry. And then you kind of leave a 91 stop and you kind of watch the price action quite, quite closely at 78. But something like that. Looks interesting. Um, retail sales, one hour, 14 minutes. That will be the likely trigger here. Sterling Swiss, we never trade this. We have a lot of friends here uh, who are, are Scottish um, who trade this because, you know, they own sterling assets or whatever. They still think in sterling even after being here for 30 years. Um, the chart doesn't give you any 
indication that there's something to do here. I guess it's it's marginally bearish. Um, you know, you didn't even take you know if you if you went into this and sort of sold highs. I don't know who the fuck trades sterling. So why are you even looking at that? Um, anyway, euro sterling is interesting. I'm going to go to crude for a second and talk about some things that I don't really understand. Um, crude dropped like 5% yesterday. It's now down another percent today. Um, why isn't CAD yen lower? Why isn't euro Norway higher? Euro Norway, I can understand a little bit. And it is higher, I guess. They raise rates and, and Euro Norway is back on the move. Um, but why isn't CAD yen lower? Correlation's a little bit broken on that one. Is it gonna come back? Uh, is it gonna come back? Look at this CAD yen chart. All the yen crosses, of course, but holy moly, just ridiculous. Um, should CAD yen be a little bit lower? Why did we make uh, not all-time highs, but pretty close to like major highs. We were at 110 in the fall of 2022. Have we ever been higher than 110? No, we've never. Oh yeah, back in 2008, we were at 124. Um, I don't know why is Cadian here I, with crew dropping five percent. Cadian it was up one percent yesterday. That doesn't make any sense to me. Finally, dollars are. If you did pick up dollars are in the thirties yesterday, great. Uh, we 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 did. Uh, we paid thirty four thirties. We sold forty eights. So now we're out of it. Feeling a little bit. I'm happy. Whatever. We made some good money on on dollars are today. But you know, this can easily go another forty big figures. Um, the first real resistance is is nineteen double O. So, you know, we're going to have to move on. We're not going to sit here and be, you know, think that 1844s are going to get given today. Um, long dollars are, uh, has been friendly to us. Let's look at uh, stocks. We talked about 44, 45 um, kind of encapsulating things. That's what the flock, you know, that's kind of a flock call. And of course, I'm also a member of the flock, um, as well as everybody is. That sterling in trade was a perfect example of that. That was a flock stop. Um, if this thing breaks 43.90 today and has like a little bit of a, uh, I don't know, negative day, and then I guess this will end up being a negative week. What's the week look like? Haven't had a red week in a while. Um, looks like we're going to get a red week this week. But just keep an eye on 43.90. Not suggesting this is a break trade or anything, but if you are short cross yen um, or you're short Aussie yen, Aussie yen's been a nice horse. It's already down 1%. Uh, but it looks like she wants to have a day, Ozzy Yen. So careful of this. I would not fade this. I'm not sure where to get short this. Um, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Anyway, uh, that's all I got for you. Good luck out there. Talk to you tomorrow.